Hello everyone, welcome to The Raid, the Gamer Access PC Gaming Podcast. It is Thursday, April 23rd, 2015. I'm your host, Bronson Fiore, joined by Nick McCandless. What's up, everyone? And Tony Ta. Hi there. And my roommate, once again, Intern001. Hi, everybody. Also known as Ray. Also known as Ray. Free the intern, 2015. God damn it! Yes. Uh, yeah, there was, yeah, we we talked about that on the podcast on unscripted yesterday because someone left a comment for the uh, the show saying hashtag free the earn free the intern 2015 or something like that. Oh my god! Every time someone says that, I'm gonna taser him. <laughs> so I'm uh, I'm keeping a notebook written down for when I buy a taser and just zap zap. <laughs> Is it all at once or in spurts? It'll probably be in spurts. Um. Anyway. How's everyone doing today? We play any PC games over the little break we had there? Doing well. I've been playing. The only game I've been playing, I got through a little bit more of The Witcher 2 because I definitely want to beat it before The Witcher 3 comes out in less than a month. I think it comes out May 19th, so it's coming up pretty yep. soon. Um, I've been playing Mortal Kombat 10. I purchased it on the PC, so I've been enjoying Mortal Kombat 10, having a blast with that. Um, yeah, I think that does it for PC gaming this week. A lot of Mortal, uh, Mortal Kombat 10s, a lot, a lot of that, and then, like I said, I got some decent progress in The Witcher 2. Uh, I know I played uh, MKX on the PS4 because I rented it, didn't buy it. Uh, man, that game is a lot of fun. It's, it is a lot of fun. Uh, so there's a there's a fatality in that game. I want you to check out. Go look it up online if you don't have it unlocked. It's the it's the second Cassie Cage fatality. Oh God! She she takes a selfie of her doing the fatality. It's <laughs> it's it's fantastic. It's it's magical. Um, we intend to play some of the. So, you're probably wondering why the Super Senpai Bros haven't streamed for like four days, because we've been working till like eight thirty at night every single day. Mm-hmm. So, that's why. But we're gonna be back soon. And we're going to be back with a little MK before starting The Last of Us. To be fair, though, we did stream at midnight one night. Yeah. Which was pretty popular somehow. Yeah. <laughs> and it apparently turned into Love Line. It was. It was the Love Line with the Senpai Bros. Yeah. Like, for some reason, our viewers felt the need to come to Ray and I for romantic advice. They came to me while you played for romantic Yeah. Like, advice. I was focused on not dying. And, like, you were saying everything I would say. So I was just yeah. like, yeah, he's got it. <laughs> Okay, so I'd be like, Bronson, you want to pitch in? You'd be like, no, Ragnar's getting me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, Anthony, what about you? What have you been playing for PC games? PC games, not much, actually. Nothing new. Nothing uh, new? Yeah, nothing right. new. You know, Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, the, the... Writing up a preview for Galactic Civilizations III. Uh, beta. How's that been? Because that's in beta. Yeah, I remember uh, that. Well, my impression is still the same as the last time. Uh, the last time I talked about it. So, eh, there's nothing really bad about it. It's in beta, so a lot of features are kind of locked out. So you, 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 they literally even say it right on the games for testing purposes only. So. Whatever I saw wasn't exactly a true representation. It's just like, we're testing out features. There will be bugs. And it may probably not be as fun as the real version, which comes out next month, I think. So it's working so far. That, that's kind of like my whole problem with Steam Greenlight is the fact that like these games are unfinished. And I feel like a lot of people don't understand that. And they buy it and they get super pissed that it's not like... A finished product yeah again. we talked about that extensively i went on a huge ass rant on unscripted access last night about that like completely went off so well, listen it's it's the same reason that like when you play a demo at e3 versus a demo at pax like you know e3 a lot of the demos are more broken than the pax demos because at pax the general public will see those and kind of it it affects their buying decision because I know uh, when I went to PAX, I bought Borderlands 2 off of what I played at PAX. I had no, I had no intention to buy Borderlands 2 because I hated the first one. But when I played the second at PAX, I thought this they made this so it wasn't bad anymore. Um, <laughs> but no, I've been playing a fair amount of Heroes of the Storm. Uh, John and I did a midnight stream of Heroes of the Storm. And 
We, uh... That game is very interesting, because this is the first MOBA I've played where I've never... Okay, I'm, apparently I'm surprised. That's the first... Anyway, it's the first MOBA I've played that never felt, like, super overwhelming to play. Like, when I got into Dota, and when I played League, I, like, get into the game, and I'm just like, oh my god, what is all this shit? What it, like, there's items to buy, and all these stats, and, mm -hmm. you, like, in the case of League, shit carries over from game to game, certain items. You know, and... What? Oh, the thing you said about League, the only the buffs you buy, like, out of games carry over, like... Yeah, that's what like, I meant. Oh, okay, I thought you meant, like, in-game, no, like, no, buy I'm, materials yeah, no. get... <laughs> No, uh, uh, you the mean all those runes and uh, yeah, the mastery runes. points. Yeah, like you can yeah. pay twenty bucks and have like a huge advantage. I remember every game. those. Yeah, which I, I that is something I found annoying about League. Yeah, well, how you could basically it, go in at level. Well, six. to be honest <laughs> yeah. though, when I looked at it, it's like it's just like an RPG tree, really. Yeah, well, that's well, just how I looked at it. But yeah, I but, can see how but, that's a little difficult sometimes. It's the same reason why I get irritated at like Call of Duty. Like if you're level sixty in Call of Duty. You have like a massive advantage over people who are like level three, versus you know uh, like Halo, a game I love dearly. Everyone in every well, game except Halo Four. At least, it's a it, at least start. in League, they try and pair you up with people of similar level. And if you're at level thirty, every you just get you play against people who are level thirty or just different tiers. So everyone has like similar points. They just distribute it differently. Yeah, depending on how you want to play it so like if like I'm level twenty one or twenty two, the last time I touched it, I don't play against level thirty people. For the most part, I play mainly against people that are around my same level or lower, because it's more fair that way. In fact, it's actually I think it's unranked play because if it's ranked, then you have to be at least level thirty because they do that whole bronze, silver, platinum, diamond challenge tier thing. Yeah, with the yeah. Elo rankings and that kind of stuff, it, it oh. gets it gets really complicated. Something I do want to say that I found super cool, every time I've seen or played Heroes of the Storm so far, everyone ends it with like, good game, good game, instead of League, which is just like, you son of a bitch, you cost me the mid. Oh uh, yeah, man, like, like, people in League, like, that has to be one of the most toxic communities. It is the it is. worst community in video games. all-time worst community. Like, I mean, I it's like, you think Call of Duty is bad? You think 12-year-olds are bad? You should see some raging adults that literally just come down on you just because you did one little task in the jungle wrong. Like, I, you know, I've only been into Call of Duty twice in my entire life. Like, really hardcore into it. Yeah. And... I thought, like, there's a lot of time where I thought, man, video game communities don't get worse than that, right? Mm -hmm. and that, oh, man. And then I tried to get into League, because Quinn and Jordan were really obsessed with League for a good were year. Um, Jordan still is. Uh, yeah. and, I and I played it, and I was like, this is horrible. This is worse than the Dota community. This is worse than the fucking WoW community, which at times can be horrible. If you have five the thing friends that makes to play this, with, League is good. The thing that makes this bad is that in Call of Duty, you can have like the top two or three people literally carry the entire quote-unquote team forward. In League, everyone has to contribute to have a good chance of winning. I mean, like yeah, if you have like one slacker, in a rare occasion you might be able to pull off a win if the other team messes up enough. But it is so dependent on everybody that what is that person who has that paladin mentality? Everyone sucks but That's me. You're going to blame. They blame everyone else. And when Don't. you have a team, then you need the whole team to succeed to even win. What do they do? They point fingers at everyone else. Like, I, literally, I, I have been verbally harassed. Even verbally harassed because I decided to retreat and because I felt like if I keep going forward, I'm going to be suicidal. And this one person thought I should have been brave and not like a chicken. And I should have charged in and used all my abilities. I thought, dude, there's like three of us and five of them. We're going to die. That was my logic. It, it's, it's the same thing. Not with, to mention uh, the one with low health is the freaking tank. And of course the tank wants you to attack him. That's what a tank does. Uh, yeah, it's it's Dota two. Uh, Dota two's community I felt was kind of the middle between the three. Like Dota two had a community that was kind of mixed. I found when I got into that game. Well, uh, in Dota, it's your Steam account you're risking on the line when you start getting pissed off. Yeah. So, I ah oh, man, like 
Dota 2's community still had its people like that. It just wasn't as bad. And I also found way more people willing to help. Like, in League, no one is willing to teach you anything in League. No one. Unless they are a friend of yours, they're going to tell you, go screw off. Yeah, basically. Uh, But in Dota, like, there were people, like... I remember in my first, like, week playing Dota, it was obvious you're new. You would tell who's new in those games, typically. And, like, people were telling me, oh, hey, try this. This should be. This is a good build for your character, so on and so forth. Buy these items; it'll make it so you well, can I should the point lane. out that when you played Heroes of the Storm, it's still in beta. No, that was like, Dota. No, that was Dota. Dota. Oh, whoops. Yeah, um, yeah. So uh, Dota's community was relatively civil. Like there, there were some exceptions, but for the most part, it was it was a p- pretty positive community. Uh, Heroes has been a great community so far. Uh, you know, like there's a, there's a, like I would say like one in every four games someone talks trash, but I mean it's still in like I was in the alpha when I played a lot of it, and now it's in beta, and it's not it's not bad still, even though a lot more people have been in. I do I do want to so. say it's in beta though because the average person that rages probably would not be in the beta. As yeah, far as, I, like that that's just my logic. It's like maybe we should wait until like the full thing comes out. Then yeah, we'll see what right. happens because Blizzard's huge. Like Blizzard is like one of the biggest gaming developers out there, and they make World of Warcraft, and they make StarCraft, and they make Diablo, and they make Hearthstone, and they're all insanely popular PC games. So you know, it's just like, huh? Well, we probably should wait and see what happens because just because you have a big community doesn't mean it's going to work out well. Yeah. Here's a question yeah. coming from someone who doesn't play MOBAs. Do you think that it's elements of the game that inspires the communities to be better, one better than the other? Like, what I, what in the game causes in a community to be better or not? I think. Okay, so League is the most popular, and I think that because of that, you get and it's you know. And it's Man. the one. So it's like the Call of Duty, pretty much. Call of Duty, you have the kids yelling out yeah, all the you, racial slurs you have and the kids screw your mom and... and all this stupid shit. Yeah, like if I had to describe it, I would say that um, that League is Call of Duty, uh, that um, Dota is Battlefield or Arma, and then uh, Heroes is kind of like Halo. Where it's like, you know, the the Halo community for the most part was pretty fucking civil until you go into the MLG playlist. Yeah. Hey, Anthony, do you remember that time we played Halo Reach and went to the MLG playlist and lost like 50 to 6? Yeah, that was pretty entertaining. <laughs> that was just like, but I'm like, <laughs> like, it was me, you, Brian, we, and Mark. Yeah, we were just like, well, here's three pretty good Halo players and one pretty newbie Halo player. And. Yeah, we all just looked hilariously bad. Oh, dude, like... There, there, was no, there was no other way to put it. Like, Brian was like, we were going to get beat so bad, and we ended up losing... It was like 50 to 6. Yeah. Um, I think that, like, the... The thing about League, it definitely has the Call of Duty effect. I think the reason that Dota has so much of a... I would say, I would say a better community overall... Other than a few bad eggs, is because I think it because of the game's learning curve that the people who play it realize that if you want teammates who aren't the worst, you have to help. You have to help them, and then also there's the fact that they have that whole coaching system where you can have like like you can click on this mode and have someone from the community coach you in the game, Um, you know, and things like that, like. And then as for Heroes, there's the fact that it's still in beta. There's the fact that it's kind of more uh, like the Smash Brothers of MOBAs. Like, it's really easy to get into and play. Oh, yeah, Ray. Oh, and something Anthony said, or like, actually, and you were saying, too, about how Heroes is still in beta. I actually played League when it was still in beta. Was the community still horrible? No, it was actually the nicest community I've ever seen. Like, everyone was like, yeah, this is great, because there was, like, seven characters at this point. Yeah. <laughs> it was really low. But, like... And then I left for about, like, a two-month period, and, like, it, it came out, and then I came back into it, and it was, like, the meanest people I've ever seen, like, the most aggressive people, like, even, like, beginning of the game, like, first kill came up, and they're just, like, really, you died that quick? See, wow, you suck. I was just like, wow. See, the thing it's is, a, the Heroes beta, almost everyone gets into it now, though. Yeah. Like, you just, just need to sign up. It have that it's effect. almost public. It's just like, you're in the beta, and here's more beta keys. More be- and it, they're just throwing out beta keys. Like, they're, thro- they're throwing beta keys out like pennies, so it's like... like- 
<laughs> Oprah's just on a jetpack flying around. You get a beta code, and you get a beta like, code. Like, I had a friend yeah. on Twitter be like, I got five extra keys, who wants them? And I tried to give one to Ray, and in the one day that he waited, he got into beta. <laughs> so, yeah, it's... So, I think it's a lot bigger beta, that, so, I don't know, maybe yeah, the community like, just is horrible. Joking. Yeah, like, I, like I just checked the checkbox, and it's kind of obvious. I haven't logged into Battle.net in, like, uh, months. I haven't played World of Warcraft. I mildly got into Diablo, and I played the StarCraft Starter Edition for, like, an hour, and that was, like, three or four years ago. Uh, and I just did checkbox. Yes, I want to get into that beta. And then, like, literally, like, a week and a half or two weeks later, here's a beta, and here's some beta keys. And I gave two of them, and I gave one each to Stephanie and Tori. And I still have two left, so that's interesting. At this point, they might as well almost, like, launch the game, but considering they're still working on it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, it has a release date now, uh, which we'll get to that news story in a minute. But I also think it's the more casual nature of Heroes of the Storm. Like, you know... I, you know, Ray and I played it, and we played it with John, and it's like, John has this ability that summons a spaceship that fires down at people with the character he uses. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like, there's just tons of goofy stuff like that. Like, there's... Divine Storm. Yeah, there's this character that uh, we played against called Stitches, who's this giant undead abomination who can eat you, and then you're trapped in his stomach briefly. Uh, and there's just, like, tons of goofy, fun stuff like that. Um, Plus, I like the fact of, like, the Dragonite, like, the turrets. Yeah, like, the, there are these, you know, another thing that makes it different, there are map objectives. Like, okay, you need to control these spots at the bottom of the map and the top of the map. And then in the middle, you need someone to go use it to summon this Dragon Knight. And a Dragon Knight will come rip through, like, two walls of the enemy defense. Yeah, you know, if he's and if he's good, he can like get through the majority of it, especially if he has help. Uh, Wait, and, does the player become the dragon? Yeah. Knight? Oh, well, I did not know that. Yeah, uh, and then there's you know this one map where it's like in Egypt with these giant laser towers, and you need to go to those towers, defeat the enemies there, and then once you do that, the lasers start firing at the enemy bases, and they just shred them if you can hold them long enough. Uh, another one I really like is, um, God, what was it? Like, not only with that, there's, uh, minions on the map, which I think this is common for every MOBA. Yeah, that is Which, like, minions. you can go take these camps, and if you beat the things at those camps, they fight for you. That's a new one, though, because usually you get, like, a buff or a power-up for them, but I like the fact that they're just like, okay, now you can, we'll help. <laughs> yeah, like, like, for instance, I was in a game losing... And we took over like three ogre camps and just blew through all their walls and got to got the win. Um, I think that one thing about that game that is like like because of all this, it makes for a more casual game. It makes for a more team based game. Um, and I noticed that if you, I find that a little hard to believe because mobas in general are extremely team based. Yeah, you can't I, I, really have one person carry you in any way in these games. I, sure I mean, you could, but it's rare. <laughs> like the thing about what I've seen. the thing that makes this more team based, though, is the fact that you ha you don't have individual levels. You have a team level. Now, if one person is sandbagging, is it, it isn't going to hurt you too bad. But if like two or three people are sandbagging, it can just kill you. So, um, so yeah, like that. And then there's the fact that like I noticed when we are communicating and going after map objectives. We were just kicking the shit out of people who weren't. Versus uh, just in league map objectives is important too. Yes. Yes, but I'm not like, joking. There was this team. There was this uh, professional league team called Cloud Nine. They actually were very successful because they were objective based kind of strategy, and they pretty much were quite easily tops at during that year. The thing is, though, in League and in Dota, I've seen people who just, they play their lane really well, they own their lane, and they typically win. I, a on the competitive level, no. Yes, but I'm talking about on the, you know, the average player. Versus, you know, I go and I play Heroes of the Storm, and John and I played a match during our Love Line stream where, uh, <clears throat> where we completely own the top lane. Like, we, like, you know, Ray watched it, like, 
just completely blew through the top lane, but we still lost because no one bothered to get seeds to summon this, like, giant demon thing. Demon plant monster. Do yeah, demon plant monster. Sorry. Um, I don't know, but uh, we do have a quick news story related to that. So the Yeah, well, 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 one quick thing I want to mention is uh, one other game I've been playing that... Freaking Hearthstone. I downloaded... So that came out on the iPhone recently, and I was like, let me download this. I freaking love that game. It's a blast. Now, it's not a game that I would play on my computer, uh, but it's definitely cool on my phone when it's like, I've got a couple minutes to spare. Let me play a match in oh. Hearthstone. It's freaking awesome. I love it on my phone. Um, and I'm actually... I mean, I, I was never the one to get into like card games or anything like that, but I really got the grasp of it very quick. And I'm actually pretty well at it. I'd say about every 10 games I play, I probably win seven of them online. So I'm actually pretty freaking good in the game. So, so, so what class do you roll with? I'm curious. I roll as the... Uh, crap, what's the name? Um, so Hunter? his special ability, you can uh, summon the totem poles. Oh, the oh, shaman. shaman. Yeah. Fucking shaman decks are really good. I, I like my hunter deck. I, I like mage. And my druid. Mage decks, druid deck is fucking great. Druid's great. You can healing. turtle so well with a druid deck. It's great. Um, yeah, uh, Anthony. Can you play like, for example, so like Bronson? If you're on the computer, I'm on my iPhone. Can we still play against each other? Yes, yes, you uh, can. Really? That's yep. awesome. We should, we should. I love cross. I love cross platform stuff like that. We should. We should play it. We should set up a time to play sometime. Yeah, for sure. That'd be great. I've been, I've been wanting to do like a TGA Hearthstone tournament since the only person who doesn't play at this point is Bremen and Anthony. Oh yeah, that'd be <laughs> that'd be great. Yeah, I mean it's a lot of that'd fun. Be fantastic. I mean I'm not I'm not into like card games and stuff like that. And honestly, if it was just a card game on the computer, I probably would rarely ever play it. But the fact that I have it on my phone everywhere I go. It's freaking great. It works so well. It's like, awesome. It has made my addiction to that game so much fucking worse. Like, I was already yes. playing that game all the time. No, you weren't. Well, relatively. Like, yeah. compared to normal, like, my other games that I play. Yeah. But, like, the fact that now it's like, oh, we're, we're driving home. Pull up Hearthstone. Got 30 minutes for lunch. Pull up Hearthstone. You know, like... Bored it, at work. Pull up Hearthstone. Hearthstone. <laughs> um, you know, so you, you have all these different... So yeah, that's super great. Like it, it's it's one of the driving forces behind me wanting an iPad. Yeah, um, I've almost considered a six plus because of it. <laughs> the bigger screen for that game would yeah. be great. Like I I want to get a like iPad for books too though. That's the yeah you know and may and you know like because my uh, laptop is looking like it's gonna become an editing machine at E3, I'm gonna have, need something to type on, which means you know another tablet. Mm -hmm. Um. But yeah, that game is awesome. Anthony, play her stout. Do it, Anthony. Okay, well, if it was on Android, that would be really nice. It is, I think it is. I'm not sure. No, I did a search. When the iPhone came, version came out, looked on Android, it's not there yet. They have deck builder apps on Android, but they don't have the actual game on Android yet. Hey, well, you have but a computer? But one day it will, because let's be honest, the Android makes up, a, makes up a majority of smartphone sales. So This is true. This is very but, true. But that is true. But as someone who works in the app business, okay, yes, I'm there, are, there are more the same, I, Android I devices, but they are it. more the single app users. Biggest selling phone is well, Apple. No, no, I get that. Well, yeah, as far well, as operating not, systems, well, yeah, but it's not even that though. The fact that you got to think about all the Android. Like, here's the thing: like, uh, Android users do not use apps like iPhone users do. Do like just as an example. Well, I'm not gonna say exact numbers. That'd be an awful idea. Um, but for example, like the tennis tournament. Like, okay, that app is on Android and iPhone. I'm not going to release exact numbers, but iOS, there's about triple to quadruple the amount of users using the iPhone app compared to the Android app. And that's how most apps are. It's like, oh, yes, sorry, then I can't play Hearthstone with you guys then. Also, I'm not going to go through the mess on my PC to do this. This is e it's super easy to download on PC. It's I can't. Okay, look, I'm doing other things on my PC. Oh, can I do it out? In a car, I don't bring my laptop, and I don't have a Wi-Fi oh, hotspot okay. out in my well, car. Well, I just looked up. It is on Android, by the way. It's in the Google Play Store. I just is it? Yeah. Because I did a search, and oh, I yeah, like, find it. Yeah, like the, thing, like, the thing with, like, Android versus iPhone is, yes, there are more Android devices, but you ask any app developer, usually, like, the bigger budget, like, games and apps, yes, they'll come out on iPhone and Android at the same time. 
But the big reason why they release an iPhone is while there are more Android devices, there is substantial more app usage on the iOS side. So, yeah, I, I've been playing it on my computer because it's super fun. Like, here's the thing. The reason I like playing it on my computer, though, is I'll be at home and I'll have to wait for you get, to get home to come somewhere. Or like, I just need to kill like 10 minutes, like 15 minutes. Yeah. And there you go. But yeah, see, and, for okay. me, that's why when that's I check- why. I, that's why I like the phone version because it's like, oh, I'm waiting for this. Okay, let me pull up my phone and play a match with Hearthstone. Like, just having it in my phone, whereas my computer is like, I gotta turn my computer on. Like, that's not, I wouldn't play Hearthstone like that. That's not a card game. Sorry, excuse me. A card game is just like back when like Yu Gi Oh was a thing. I had Yu Gi Oh on the freaking, what was it? The Game Boy? The Game Boy? It? Oh, that was yeah, so good. I freaking, I loved yeah, that game. I freaking loved that game with a passion. And big reason why is I just pull my Game Boy out and play it. It's not like, a console game where you turn the console on to play a match of Yu-Gi-Oh or Hearthstone or anything like that. So it's perfect for the iPhone. It's perfect. Um, also, it if was... you had an iPad, it could work great. And PC, I... yeah, I mean, I'm sure it works well on PC. It's just the type of game that I'd prefer to play mobile. Yeah, I can definitely understand that. It's just it, like, and I definitely, I definitely love the fact that it's mobile because you can kill time somewhere. But like when I'm at home and I want to play a game and I only have like twenty minutes, fifty, you know, twenty minutes, fifteen minutes, like Hearthstone's perfect. It's the same reason like I love Super Meat Boy. Like I'm playing Super Meat Boy for like 20, ten minutes and you know get, get going. Uh, anyway, in my uh, defense, but yeah. the Android version was not out at the same time as the iPhone version because I know oh, that yeah, it came I'm out on the iPhone, so I did a search about the time and I did not see it. But it's there okay, now. Thank that's you. Fun. Yeah, yes. so yeah, Anthony, download it. Let's freaking let's get a TJ Hearthstone do tournament. Let's do it. Well, we got, let's, we got yes, eight people. a tournament. There's only like six of us that actually. There's play eight of them. Well, there's uh, yeah. And I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, I have really no interest in joining a tournament that I'm going to guarantee to lose in. So no, thank you. You don't know that. I'm not super great at the game. Neither you is play yeah. way more than I do. That's already a big head start for you right there. Well, yeah, yeah I've, been, Anthony, I've been playing the game since beta, so... Yeah, Anthony, I would just give it a shot, because I've never played card games ever, and it's just, like, it, it takes a couple matches to get used to. Like, for me, the one thing that took me a while was, like, okay, I just attacked a minion. Why the hell am I getting damaged for attacking a minion? Um, so it's just, like, little things like that, but once you get the grasp of it, it's super easy to understand. It's not, di- like, it's not, like freaking like magic the gathering where it's like you play a card and fucking the whole entire thing change it's like ridiculous um but yeah no hearthstone works very very well i really like it there's a lot of depth there you know and like building decks is fun trying to unlock new cards is fun like that's my favorite part like i love deck building that's actually why i got into magic just because that just seemed super interesting i never liked magic just because i found it overly complicated but i loved Yu-Gi-Oh back in the day i played magic for like a month but Yu-Gi-Oh i still play to this day (laughs) Yu-Gi-Oh i i played until they like Started adding more mechanics and more mechanics like and synchros more synchros and, synchros and, combo, and fusion. combo. I was just like, "Fuck this game! I'm so done with this." And I really hope Hearthstone doesn't become that. That'd be pretty bad. That because like Hearthstone, I like the basic. I like the basic gameplay of it. Like it's not extremely basic, but it's like right at the level where it's fun. It's enjoyable, and you can get the grasp of the game, but there's also a way you can master it, so... Yeah, like, I have seen... I went online, and this dude made this deck that, like, every time his hero took damage, this monster would get buffed, Mm -hmm. and he did a bunch of cards that damaged himself. So it would just, like, like, he lost half his health, but this monster had, like, 22 attack at this point. Jesus, And it was like, oh, God, what have you become? Uh... (laughs) Uh, one thing about that game I really dug was the uh, the single player uh, is like the single player adventures. Uh, have you guys paid gold or money to try those yet? No, I, I, I haven't paid a dime. I'm probably not going to pay a dime for it. I just play it and unlock cards. I would say the adventures are actually kind of worth it because they're a lot of fun. They're really challenging, and once you go through them, you get a lot of really badass legendary cards. If you stop, like, if you what lose is the, What do those cost? Uh, let me pull them up. Solo adventures. Oh, Bronson, and you can play them single that? player if you don't have a... What, yeah. If you lose during one of these, do you just get to keep retrying until you pass it? Or yeah, you yeah, just... you keep getting... It, they're single player adventures, and they are either... Do-do-do... 
seven dollars or seven hundred gold for a wing. Oh, so you uh, can get on with gold if you want to. Yeah, yeah, you don't have to pay money. Okay, like, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, like it's a lot of gold, but still gold. I only have one wing from the first one, but it's yeah, it, like I had a lot of fun playing it. And then you can play it on hard mode. On hard mode, it's super difficult, but like I said, the cards are almost kind of worth it because. You know, like, you go and you look at the rewards from the first one that came out. Kelts of the Zod, at the end of each turn, summon all friendly minions that died this turn. Oh, wow. Like, yeah. That thing messes you up, too. Yeah, like, the, the, you know, the, there's a ton of get, of these like this. Uh, hold on. I'm going to play a match of Hearthstone right now while we're talking about it. Shit. I am right now, <laughs> too. Everyone? booted up the game. I'm actually on the game looking I'm up downloading downloads. it. Wait for me. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty great. I opened it, then Bronson opened it. <laughs> oh god. Everyone has I'll open another copy on my phone. Open all the hearth stones. <laughs> all the hearth stones everywhere. Uh, but no, like, a reward from the newest one that came out is Chromagus. Whenever you draw a card, put another copy of that card into your hand. Damn, that's crazy. It is intensely powerful. Um, yeah, like, uh, Mike, I have two legendaries in my You know deck. the one I love playing that just pisses people off? Because you know how you can, like, play, you can press on your hero and, like, threaten them? Yeah. Yeah, yeah what I love doing, is, and I can't remember if it's just class-specific, but the one where you can turn any minion into a damn frog. Have you guys <laughs> oh, seen that card? That, yeah, that, that is one... so great, because I always save that shit to like the very, almost the very end, as long as he's not whooping me or I'm whooping him. And he'll put, like, he'll play something that's like a seven, like uses seven mana. It's like this ridiculous card, and I just fucking completely crush his dreams by turning into a <laughs> frog and getting rid of it. And they freaking threaten me almost every time mm. shit happens. It's classic. It's so great. Uh, yeah, no, I really like a lot of stuff like that. Um, I know... Uh, one one of my favorite ones is uh, I call it the saving my butt card. <laughs> it's it's a legendary card. It cost me. Have you guys gotten to the crafting yet? I have not. Okay, so you know how all, you buy... all I've done is I did that little tutorial. I beat the little mage little story thing you do, and then I've been playing online ever since. Okay, well, so you've you've bought cards though, right? I have I, with coins, yes. Okay, well, that's fine. You buy with coins or with gold. Well, let's say you don't want a card or you have extras of a card. You can disenchant it for uh, dust. And then I've you can seen use, that. And you can use it to buy min like buy ones. And the one I, I saved for like two months to get this guy because he was 1,600 dust. He's known as Deathwing. He costs 10 mana to summon. And when he's summoned, he destroys all other cards on the field and in your own hand. What the hell? And he yeah. has 12 attack, 12 defense. But what the for fuck? Nick, when you turn that into a frog, it's the best feeling ever. <laughs> you have to draw a frog right after, though. Or have it in your hand. No, what say, the like, If you have hell? it in your hand, you just, you just make the other person cry. Yeah. I, I, the I, frog I just... is just the best freaking thing ever. Because I just, when I get it, like, I'll get it on, like, my first roll, and I'll be like, shit, I really want to play it, but no, I'm really going to piss this Same. guy off. I did, I did that like with, with Polly. The sheep. the sheep and the mage deck does the same exact thing. Yeah. Um... Another legendary I have is Ragnaros the Fire Lord. It can't attack. It's funny, right when I say that, I literally just drawed the frog card. I'm dead serious. <laughs> it's called Hex. Transform a minion into a zero one one frog with taunt. You, you, so, so freaking awesome. You want to know what's really great? Uh, Ray is building a computer at the beginning of next year. And when he does, he's going to be playing World of Warcraft with me. And against my will. <laughs> shh, shh. But, uh, my brother is raiding. That would be awesome. <laughs> oh my god. Um all the profanity. All <laughs> um, the profanity everywhere. Uh but every single card in this game is actually something from World of Warcraft. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I figured. I figured. Um like for instance, my legend one of my legendaries Ragnaros is is like the last boss of the very first raid that was in the game. Um, hold on, I'm actually gonna go back to all sets. But yeah, like, for instance, uh, didn't go back. Um, 
you know, like you can get all kinds. Like there are some badass legendaries you can make with that crafting system if you don't buy. Yeah, them. I was wondering what that was all about. So I need to look into that because I know. Yeah, I have Bronson a, helped me with that. I know yeah, I have look, quite a bit of uh, duplicates for sure. Yeah, like, it, or if you don't want a card, like I'm never ever going to play a fucking priest deck or a rogue deck, especially a rogue deck. So, like, I can just disenchant all my rogue cards for dust and slowly gather it up towards something useful. Um, you know, like, I know that, uh, I do think that there are some cards that are just unbalanced bullshit. Ray just showed me one of the Mind Blast. I love the priest so much. It charges two mana to do five damage. That's horseshit. <laughs> I have played against someone who played that. That was bullshit. It's great yeah. when you have two of them at the same time and you're just like 10 damage. <laughs> <laughs> That's bullshit, though. Um, let's see. Like, here's one of the legendaries. Battle Cry, Alexstrasza. Set a hero's remaining health to 15. What? Yeah, so, like, let's say it, it costs 9 to summon. as 8 attack, 8 defense. And when you summon it, you so can chip. So if you... That's freaking crazy. Wow. Oh, yeah. The one I'm currently saving for is Malagos the Spellweaver, because I primarily play a Mage Burn deck, which is to attack you directly and as often as possible. God, that thing is. And he does plus five spell damage. So all your spells do plus five damage. Pyroblast would do half your health. Pyroblast would do 20 damage. Or no, 15 damage, sorry. Half your health. Uh, another one I'm trying to save up for is Archmage Antonitis. Whenever you cast a spell, add Fireball to your hand. Oh God! Which oh. fire? Which Fireball is? Um, which Fireball already does five damage. So if you, so you could cast Fireball and get another Fireball and just keep yourself in a loop for all eternity. That's mean, Bronson. Um, but yeah. It's a it's a great game. I absolutely love it, Anthony. I'm curious to see your report on it next week. Like, uh, I'm, assuming I play it, yes. I I would hope you would because it's man, downloaded it's... now. Ooh. I just need to sign in, but I'm a little occupied. Um. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a great game. I love everything about it. But other Blizzard games, Heroes of the Storm. So, um, Heroes of the Storm is going into open beta on May twentieth. And is going to be officially out on June second. Uh, there are thirty fighters available to play on seven different maps. More are going to be released uh, released over time. Currently, sometimes... sorry, go ahead. Sometimes I sit here and I wonder to myself, why do you ever need to pay sixty dollars for games when? Blizzard put so much cheap stuff out. Cheap, in quotes. Well, well, Cliffy B, I mean, he was one of the first people to come out and say it, and people looked at him like he was an idiot, but it's kind of true. He came out and said that free-to-play is the future of video games. And... But you have to do it right, though. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because if it's a case of pay to win or pay to complete campaign, then it's like... Then it's shitty. Like... Well, yeah. Like, the one, um, you know, I play, you know, Hearthstone, I've dropped about $40 on Hearthstone over the year I've been playing it, and I was fine with that, because I was like, okay, I'm really enjoying this game, I'm having a lot of fun, I want to get a couple more cards, I want to get some more cards. Well, you've, sp you've spent 60 on Hearthstone? Yeah, over the course of wow. a year. Well, to be honest, like any card game, sometimes you really just want... Wait, do they let you? Yeah, you want more cards, or you want to buy a card pack and hope you get it. It's almost like real life, except it's virtual instead. Yeah, um, and then the cards I don't use or don't want, I can just. Can you buy specific chip. single cards? No, you, you can, can only yeah, buy. If you use dust, you can. If you use dust, and you get dust by disenchanting cards you don't want, but to get really good single cards, they're kind of expensive. So, but you know, like there, there are some low level cards that you do want though. Yeah, like, watch this, guys. I'm about to piss this guy off. So he has a Lord of the Arena, which is a 6 attack, 5 health taunt, and I'm about to turn him into a damn frog right now, and then attack the shit out of his hero. Shit's gonna be fucking <laughs> classic. Uh, <laughs> that sounds I, great. What I love about this is I knew Nick would get into this game. Did you? Yeah, like, I like this game. I didn't think so I would, because I, like, card games, like... Here's the thing about those card games. So obviously as a kid I was obsessed with Pokemon, so that worked out pretty great. Um, Yu-Gi-Oh! 
I didn't actually get into the cards, but I love the freaking Game Boy game. I played that shit for exhausting hours. So I was like, let me check out this Hearthstone. At first, I was like, I don't know if I like this. But once I got the hang of it, I was like, this shit's fucking awesome. The, the so thing, freaking awesome. The thing I have kind of realized about Blizzard is like, if you don't think you are going to get into a genre, play the Blizzard version of that game because they make the most accessible, entertaining version of it for the everyman. You know, like, I, you know, like, MMOs for most people don't click, uh, but it WoW did for a lot of people. I know a lot of people who typically don't play MOBAs, but are really into Heroes of the Storm. You know, same thing with Hearthstone and card games. Um, but, uh, the, the free-to-play thing, like, I've blown $60 on Hearthstone. I haven't spent anything on Heroes yet, but on Dote, like, but I imagine I will. Like, yeah, I'm going to use gold to unlock heroes, but over time, like, I'm going to want... Like, there are certain skins I think look really cool, and I'll be willing to pay the $3 for the characters I actually want. And the the good thing about it is, though, is, like, if, A, you can unlock the stuff you want, and you're good enough to unlock it, or you just don't... Or you can just kind of pay what you want for the stuff you want. Like, Dota, Dota 2 has all the characters unlocked, but... There are a couple of skins and a couple of announcers that I thought were, you know, awesome. So I, I you know, paid for those announcers. So, I don't know. I think I do think free to play will be the future for multiplayer games and games like this. I still think that for like, you know, big single player games. Oh yeah, campaigns, single player games. Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna that's gonna be harder to do, but. Uh, yeah, like Cliffy B's new game, Blue Streak, I think what it's called. I think that's what it's called. Don't quote me on that, but it's free to play. I'm really looking forward to that because Cliffy B has all his games are freaking awesome. So I'm looking forward to uh, how that game comes out. Yeah, and I'm looking forward to that uh, that Unreal Tournament. Uh, oh God! The, oh yes! Yeah, that 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 fucking yes, 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 dude, right? Like that looks so goddamn good. Oh my gosh, yes. Like they they had, <laughs> they had gameplay at GDC and I was like, dude. Yeah, what it's is using this? the new DirectX twelve too. Shit looks fucking great. Nick, we know you have a love for DirectX twelve. <laughs> I know, we get it. It's okay. Hey, hey man. Um Anyway, hey Ray's leaving for a minute. I'll be back in a minute. Um but Yep, I just whooped this guy's ass. Woohoo. I'm freaking... Here's the thing, like, for someone that does not play card games, I seriously thought I was going to get my ass handed to me. But no, I... The, for, the some reason, for some reason, I'm just really freaking good in it. Because I say probably every ten matches I play, I win probably seven. The, the, the matchmaking is really good. Like, it, it's, it makes it so that you rarely get matched up with someone who is just leagues ahead of you. Um, right, you know, uh, and dogs barking. Um, but Nick, is there any chance we can get you to try Heroes of the Storm when it's in open beta or out? Oh man, I don't. I just I mobas, man. <sighs> but hey, man, you liked Hearthstone. John was never played a moba, and he liked Heroes. Here's the thing, Hearthstone and Heroes are two different games. Yeah, that's the thing. I, I, you know, I, if he plays with John and I, I'm feeling Nick would have a fun time. I might give it a shot, but here's the thing with me though. You guys know my setup. Like, I don't have the setup to be even playing them with my setup. I don't have the setup to play with a keyboard and mouse. Okay. I mean, I, I, how how big is your chair arm? Like the, your armrest. It's there's there's okay, no way I could the, do it. The only way that I could, yeah, there's just no way because I would need a. Arm. There's just no way it would work. I need like a little desktop, like a little to set it on so the mouse works correctly and stuff like that. I I would say that like it, you know if you can get like a wireless keyboard and mouse. Oh, I have I, ha I have a wireless keyboard and mouse. That isn't the problem. It's where what I'm gonna put the mouse and keyboard on. The keyboard you can put on your lap. That's not an well, issue. It's the because I've seen your setup, Bronson, at least from stream. It is not very comfortable doing that. Yeah, that would be beyond uncomfortable. Okay, well, still. It's I, like, I, he's like, yeah, you can play that game if you really stretch it, but it's not very comfortable. You kind of have to have a desk. Fair enough. Um, 
Yeah, I don't know. I, I want Nick to try that game, I, even if he has to rearrange a little bit of his living room. Uh, I think it's a lot of fun, and that tutorial is really good. Hey, Anthony, next time John and I stream it, you should totally play with us. Ditch me on the stream. Uh, yeah, all right. Yeah, but maybe, next time you, maybe next time you guys stream, I'll do it too. I'll be I playing can, on my iPhone, but... <laughs> I, I, can, I can teach you how to play support. It'll be super fun. John can teach you how to play uh, specialist. Oh, or... yeah, oh, sorry, I thought you were talking about Hearthstone. No, no. <laughs> uh, John can teach you how to play. Uh, God, it's not DPS, but you know what I'm talking about. Um, uh, AD carry assassin, or whatever. Assassin. assassin. Yeah, ranged assassin. Sorry, I'm a little plays. stuck in League Land. No, it's cool. Uh, but you can. I he can teach you how to play assassin. Ray can teach you how to play tank. It'll be a good time. Um. It, it, the thing I've noticed about playing hero, especially my or uh, support, especially uh, for my main Uther, run around healing everyone. Once you hit level ten, continue to run around healing everyone until someone gets close to you. Then use your holy death tornado. Um, but yeah, that game I've had a lot of fun with it. I like I like its more casual nature. The fact that I stopped playing for months and then come back to it and it's like stuff has changed but none of it's too daunting um but we got other news uh hey batman that's a thing oh yes cannot wait for that shit it is it is <laughs> batman is a thing and it is most certainly coming out june 23rd and they have announced what the pc specs are for it anthony you and i can't play it what on pc but but i just need to buy a graphics card yeah you're good if you buy a graphics card i'm kind of screwed um your laptop right. is yep how wait what does uh, it have to do in order for your laptop to be screwed at this point uh all right it needs to be a graphic card better than a 650 ti which the the minimum card for this is better than a 650 ti um so well, your laptop is still running. I wouldn't call that being screwed. Yeah, uh, screwed would be you can't run it at all. Well, I can't. It needs better than a 650 Ti. But yours is a 770M. Yes, which is a, like a, a desktop 650 Ti. Um, I think you might still be able to pull it off. Yeah, we'll uh, see. You're probably gonna, at worst, you're gonna have to stretch some things. Um, if you crank that shit all the way down. <laughs> at yeah, that that's point, basically at, it. Batman at, is not going to look good now. <laughs> at that point, I'm probably just going to play it on the PlayStation or the Xbox. Yeah. Um, but you need Windows 7 or 8.1. All right, so this is the minimum specs. An Intel Core i5-750 at 2.6 GHz, 6 gigs of RAM, an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 660 with 2 gigabytes of memory. Okay. Um, okay. Not a pro. Not a problem. <laughs> yeah, Nick, yours is the ultra setup. I'll get to you in a minute. Uh, <laughs> oh, the there's an ultra setup. Yes, there's min recommended and ultra. Oh boy. All right, recommended. I'm gonna come up with supreme <laughs> now. It's gonna um, be like octane readings at uh, gas stations. Uh, You're running uh, 87, 89, or 91 octane. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Recommended system settings. Uh, an Intel i7-3770 at 3.4 gigahertz, 8 gigs of RAM, and an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 760 with 3 gigs of memory. Once again, not a problem. <laughs> All right. The Ultra system specs. An Intel i7-3770, 3.4 gigahertz, 8 gigs of RAM. The only thing that changes is the graphics cards, an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 980 with 3 gigs of memory. Okay, yeah, I've got Once all Once again, that. Not, another pro not a problem. In fact, I'll be running two freaking 980s by the time that game comes out, so I'll probably be running that shit. Probably not 4K, but probably 2K. I'll be freaking good to go, man. That shit's going to be freaking yeah, crazy. Like, it's like, oh, man, I could run Android. Oh, 980. Oh. oh, also, it needs 55 gigs to install. Easy. I have yeah, a terabyte. Yeah, I have 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 a terabyte. I just like Storage the comp. Cheap. I just enjoy the uh, comment on the article. Fifty-five gigabytes of justice. 
Um, mm. Yeah, I'm I'm really excited for this game. Uh, its PC specs seem fucking intense. Uh, which is point... great, which means that game's gonna look fucking ridiculous. I yeah, cannot that, freaking wait. That game is gonna look great. Like just look like they showed the PS4. Like they've been showing footage on PS4. Oh, the PS4 cool. looks freaking um, dude. The freaking PC version is gonna make me freaking cry. Yeah, I'm gonna, like, see, I, I'm gonna be playing. Like I said, if a 980 is ultra, that probably tells me that I can probably do 2K ultra. Well, maybe maybe not quite actually, because SLI you don't get exactly double the performance. So maybe I'll only be able to do 1080 ultra. Any well, maybe I'll do like 1440 or yeah, something it, like that. With two with two 980s, you should be able to do 1445. Like that's yeah. no question. I know that uh, you know, like I said. Uh, my machine, the desktop equivalent is a 650 Ti. I'm on a 765 laptop. Uh, yeah, this game I'm going to be playing on the console, sadly. But uh, by the time I do build my PC, this game will be on a Steam sale for next to nothing. And I'll get to see how pretty it is on PC for way cheaper, at least. Um, Anthony, are you going to be getting this on PC? Or if you do buy it, are you going to get it on the PlayStation? I have no clue right now. Or I mean, the graphics card upgrade opens up my options quite a lot, actually. Yeah. Because, oh. you know, it's like, well, obviously everything's on my PS4 because a 550, 550 Ti can barely run anything these days. I am starting and to... anything it can run is on low settings now. Yeah, I'm... By the way, a uh, quick PC gaming report. You guys know GTA 4. Not GTA 5, GTA 4. Yeah. Install the PC version of that. Hey guys, guess what? It's still broken. <laughs> Seriously? Oh. Yeah, like frame. They probably like, just gave up on it, to be honest. R- random frame, like fucking just playing the game to test out to see if it'll work for a live stream in the future. And uh, you know, because uh, our current, the Super Senpai Bros' current list of games is we're gonna do Last of Us. And if we have time between Batman and, Su- and Last of Us, we'll do Sunset Overdrive. And then we're going to play well, draw. The, well, the good thing is, at least they learned their lesson with GTA 5. GTA 5 is optimized crazy freaking well. Like, crazy well. Like, you can run that game on a pretty basic computer. And if you have a high end computer, you can really make that game look I mean, freaking to be unbelievable. Honest, to be honest, like, I can run, GTA put this way. On my 980, just my single 980, I can run that game in 2K maxed out and almost get 60 frames per second consistent which means with two 980s i'll be able to run 2k maxed out without an issue and then if i wanted to do 4k i could probably do it i would just be playing it in 30 frames per second um yeah to, put to be that... honest though they actually probably have a, they really they have a good optimization day because they managed to get that game to run on a 360 like think about that yeah that's very and true have you guys ever played like not like the battle of gay tony which actually looks a little better but like the original gta 4 on the 360 i would look at that game and i'm like why is everything so brown why is everything why so is, blurry like why, I've been, yeah why are the trees all mushed up like i've been playing the pc version which looks better but even then it has problems yeah this game you know the, it it's they don't have a recommended requirement at least oh wait hold on yeah they don't have a recommended requirement but its base requirement was a set which was a 7900 so the regular game probably requires something in the 200 series uh to run on ultra and i'm running on you know the desktop equivalent once again 650 ti and holy shit like just i'll be i'll i'll just be playing and it won't be like a high end scene and the frame rate will just cut in half like it'll be running at a solid like 60 65 and then just drop and what game is this? GTA 4. Got it. Yeah, like, yeah. So, uh, surprisingly, GTA 4. Did they still... release that? Did they release that on the PC the same day as the consoles? No, they released it like nine months later. Got it. I mean, it's still fun. For those of you who haven't played GTA 4, uh, yeah, that story is still great. The game's still fun. Gameplay's not as good as 5, but everything else is pretty great. Um, yeah. That and the game constantly wants to me to like sign into games for Windows Live, which that's fine because I, you know, I have an Xbox account. It's just weird. Um, it makes uh, me actually games for Windows Live. It it actually makes me want another GTA set in New York. Going back and playing this again. Um, 
and if not like New York, New Jersey, then I would like to see like them handle the West Coast the way they did it, they did in San Andreas, where you did you got you got L.A. but plus you got the Bay Area and you got uh, Las Vegas. Oh, uh, I I don't know about Las Vegas. Las Vegas was cool. In Las Vegas, Ve- yeah, but yeah, Las Vegas is cool. But there's the Vegas Strip, and then there's a city, and then there's just desert. But then I'm like, the Bay Area is more interesting because freaking. You guys ever looked at the difference between San Francisco and Oakland? It's pretty. Yeah, it's a pretty it's, it's it's like GTA Four when you're in downtown Manhattan and then go to the New Jersey I mean, area. How, like, how do I put this? Like, San Francisco is, it's basically hipster capital, right? Like, oh, definitely. Have, then you, then it's there in Portland. Then you, have San, then you have San Jose and Silicon Valley. <laughs> then you have Oakland. So it's like quite a contrasting kind of thing. In the Whistle Bay area. tips. Um, Anthony gets that joke. Uh, Whistle tips. <laughs> uh, rub down a little sis, drive off and run the stop sign, nearly hit somebody. That was interesting. <laughs> um, um, yeah. Yeah, so I did a little bit of that on PC actually earlier today. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm going to try and find some community mods for it to make it not run like crap. Um, <laughs> but, you know. Hopefully I get that working. If not, our stream is going to be really interesting when we're in a cop car chase. The frame rate drops for three seconds, then goes back to normal. Uh, and not because of the hardware we're playing it on, just because that's the game. Um, by the way, there are some, in other PC gaming news, there, is some ste- there are a lot of Steam sales going on this weekend. Tons of Steam sales. So, for those of you who have not played Skyrim on the PC, it is $5 this weekend. If you want Skyrim with all its DLC, it is $13.59. Okay, what is $15.99? The what? $13.59. It is, um, they got the, so Skyrim, you're aware of Skyrim. Yes. If you, if you want Skyrim and all of its DLC, it is $13.59 right now. Interesting. If you just want Skyrim, it's five dollars. If you want to buy those DLC separately, they are two fifty for Hearthfire, seven forty for the other two. So, if you have yet to get around to Skyrim, there you go. Shadows of Mordor. That was a big game from last year. That was one of John. That was John's game of the year. It's good. It is a good game, and it was our number five. I believe. What did we put F4 then? Persona 4 Ultimax. Oh, okay. And I feel that makes sense because half the staff played that game every week for three months. So, you know, kind of justified it. Anyway, uh, it is $25 on Steam right now. Okay, that's not too bad. That is more than cut in half. I mean, I think you can get that game for uh, the like fu- 30 or 40 bucks online retail now. Yeah, if you it's were been to out dig for a around, while. games like that tend to drop in price pretty quickly. Yeah, because they're single player experiences. And, yeah. yeah, like Dragon Age, it's like, oh, it's a six dollar game. Well, I guarantee you, the moment Christmas is over, it'll drop to forty, and it did. I got Dragon Age Origins and a couple other games for a dollar the other day. A dollar. Uh, Actually, uh, uh, EA gave it out uh, for free on Origin. Um, I know when Inquisition came out, so. I installed it, played it for like 30 seconds, and I'm like, okay, that's good enough, and promptly uninstalled Origin and booted it off my computer. Yeah, I so the Humble Bundle's going on right now, and I'm not paying the $5 for the extra games because I don't really care about the second Dragon Age. Mass Effect 2 I've played on every system so many times. I'm planning to get on PC. doesn't really make sense. And Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare, I'm sure that I can go into the other room and play it on my roommate's PlayStation. So that's not really an issue. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's that. Um, anyway, so for a dollar, I got Dragon Age Origins, Peggle, Dead Space 2, Command and Conquer Generals, and Medal of Honor Allied Assault. So, yeah. Um, anyway, moving forward. The last sale that's on Steam is a roguelike sale. Uh, for those of you who don't know what roguelites are, they're games similar to The Binding of Isaac, Rogue Legacy. 
things of that nature. Um, don't starve. And a bunch of these are on sale for super, super cheap. Uh, the notable ones that are liked by members of the staff. John and I really and John and I really like Rogue Legacy. It's three dollars and seventy five cents. Tori and Stephanie really like Don't Starve. It's five dollars. Anthony, I believe you like Spelunky, correct? Uh, no, I I haven't played Spelunky before. Oh, that was Kenneth that really liked that game, right? Yeah, he's crazy good at it. Okay, well, it is three dollars and seventy five cents. The first Binding of Isaac is a dollar sixty nine. Uh, the second one is ten bucks. So if you want a really good roguelike, you have can spend anywhere from a dollar to ten dollars and have your pick. Personally, if you have not played Rogue Legacy, you should probably get on that. It is a fantastic game. Anyway, that's uh, it for Steam sales right now and humble bundles. Next news story I have: Valve. We all like Valve here, right? Everyone here, I imagine, is pretty pro Valve. Yeah, I mean, they're the well, people dude. behind Steam. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just like, uh, well, they make Steam and they take your money every year because you compulsively give it to them. Because, hey, it's only a dollar. What harm could it be? Yeah, exactly. The, yeah, the business <laughs> model can be very evil sometimes. D- no, like, I, I definitely like. Last year, I ha- I just got out of political season. Um, and if it weren't for Comic-Con taking a large portion of my money, I probably would have spent all that money that I spent on Comic-Con on the winter Steam sale. So, definitely understand the evil... Like, Nick, you haven't been PC gaming during a Steam sale yet. Like, during one of the big ones. Like, the big The last big one there was is when I got The Witcher 2 for, like, four bucks. Yeah, that's not a big one. That's for less than the price of lunch. By The Witcher, and that, that game's that, freaking amazing. That that's not a big one. That's a normal one. They have two big ones every year: one in the summer, and one in the um, and one in the winter. And like for uh, they usually last like half a month, and every day they have just ridiculous sales. Like I got Skyrim for two dollars and fifty cents. Like games go on sale every a- day, every couple of hours. Some new games are on sale to rotate in. It's nuts. And that, that they do that during the summer? They do that once during the summer and once during the winter. Like I got cool. ten ga- I got ten games on my Steam wish list, which you know, like people know me, they can go on my Steam wish list and be like, oh, that's a good birthday gift or whatever. And and like I guarantee you all of these except maybe GTA five will be on sale in some way. Damn. Uh, the Stanley Parable, Audio Surf 2, Polynomial, Shogun 2, Symphony, Game of Thrones, Borderlands, Metal Gear Rising, and Broken Age will all be on sale. GTA will probably be on sale, but only be like 15 bucks off. Um, so yeah, definitely, uh, yeah. Anyway, there, there is, uh, there is some, st- some news regarding Steam, though. They are announced as measures to combat Steam spam and phishing. You now have to spend at least $5 in the Steam store to unlock all available features. Users who do not spend $5 will not have access to things such as friend invites, voting on Greenlight, or submitting content to the Steam Workshop. Simply activating a retail game does not remove the subscriptions. You either need to add $5 to your Steam wallet or purchase a game worth at least that amount in the Steam store uh, in U.S. dollars, the equivalent amount in your currency is tracked. Here's the thing: so for people like us, this isn't a big deal, and I heard about this. But what concerns me here are the kids that go on and they may play the free-to-play games on Steam, and now they're having to go to their parents and be like, "Hey, I need your credit card, and it's only five dollars for this online." Th- like their parents would be like, "I'm not giving you my credit card to." put some money into an online game or something like that. That's where the concern comes in. Like for people like us who are old enough to have bank accounts and stuff like that, it's not an issue. But for kids, this kind of sucks. Like, like I re- big time. Like I remember that when I was a kid, Xbox Live was a new thing. And I really wanted the Halo maps and that like I really had to convince my mom that that shit was safe. And I actually did have to give her the money too. Like I, you know, so 
I don't know. Like, yeah, this sucks if you are a kid, like just a kid that wants to, you know, go onto Steam and have all access to all the free to play shit. But on the other hand, I feel that we are in an, like an era where you know people are less paranoid about online spending, at least you know in the parts of the country where we live. Well, um, yeah, but it's just kids trying to convince their parents that hey, I need five dollars for this online game thing or whatever, you know? Yeah. Like if the I, parents I just, know what Steam is, oh sure, yeah, it's not a problem. But a lot of parents are gonna be like, hell no, you know. I have a feeling that, like, when everyone on the staff is parents, like, we are going to know so, like, we are going to blow our kids' minds with, like, they're, like, going to try and sneak shit past us involving games and be like, ha, ha, ha no. <laughs> well, no, uh, no, and then it's going to be some fucking virtual reality shit that we're going to be like, yeah, I remember back in the day where we used to have conversations with real people. I remember how? the days that, oh, I remember the you days where really we would, I remember the, head. yeah, I remember the days where we would actually, you know, like, go like to the bar and like talk instead of oh virtual reality let me go ahead and get a beer and have a bar date with this person while i had okay. to take my beer you just brought like a really <laughs> bad scenario to my head it's just like oh there's the kid, a lot of bad the kid scenarios looks over, it's like the kid puts on virtual reality this big bulky headset or glasses i imagine would be at that point would just be like hey dad that tv show is awesome ryan points to the wall and the dad just looks over the wall and sees a completely different um questionable show and be like hmm yep definitely interesting uh, yes and, <laughs> and freaking the adult industry is gonna go wild yeah uh they're gonna go completely wild uh microsoft, it, like, microsoft like, will probably to... try and put in some like ultra strict uh you probably could attempt to put in some ultra strict yeah there's hackers though That's yeah the and then there's the hackers which will be like you know just uh homebrew stuff yeah so it's like games we may be fine on but trust me when it's at the point where we're like freaking grandparents there's gonna be shit that we will just not understand like you ask like freaking grandparents about what a selfie is and they're gonna be like what the fuck like why why why, why even are I, you even i'm like that but there's gonna be something like we don't know what that thing is we don't know what it is but when we're at that age, there's that thing is gonna be there, and we're just not gonna understand it oh, because oh, for, for, for whatever sure. reason, we will just not understand it. For sure. But there's also gonna be the moments where it's just like that that we won't have that we had, where our parent like like you know, I remember. I'm sure you guys may remember making your first online account that had to do purchases, and you had to have your conversation with your parents about that. Well, yeah. But but that is the same thing that I mean that's that happens to every generation. Our parents had to deal with shit we'll never have to deal with. They had to deal with time before the internet. Well, we pretty much grew up in the internet. Well, here's the thing though is that I feel like our generation is like a lot more adapted to quickly learning new things. Because you think about it, a 1950s car. And a 1970s car is going to drive exactly the same. There's just probably one new button on the dashboard for air conditioning. And that's about it. All of a sudden, to go from 1990 to 2050, all of a sudden, your car has all these computer screens. Like Ford, they have this you know, computer screen where you can hook up your phone. You have navigation. You control your radio. And you've got... Uh, automatic climate control then your dashboard has more computer screens and there's all these buttons and touchscreen stuff you can do and for someone like me and bronze we could sit down and spend five minutes in that car and we'll be like hey this is easy but then you know i show that to like my dad and he's like how do you hook up your phone I, what i mean like even like when i was a kid i had moments like that with my parents like you know the the PlayStation had a cable for it, like for it didn't have a power brick it just had a cable, and like same thing with all like the Super Nintendo and the Genesis. So like we got I you know uh, none of those systems were mine. They were all my cousins or my dad's. Like my first system that was all mine was the N sixty four. And if you remember the N sixty four, it had a power brick, but it was built into the back of the system. And he was like trying to figure out how the hell does this work. Like, what the hell? And then, like, I just pick it up, spend two minutes with it, and have it working. You know, if yeah, the same... I mean, it's just, I mean, it's just like kids... I mean, yeah, freaking kids are, like, three years old, and they know how to work iPhones and iPads. It's, like, freaking unbelievable. Yeah, but... like, 
Like, I think back to, like, when I was, like, five years old, I was, like, I was watching Power Rangers and Batman, and I thought I was a genius for putting together this, like, Batman tent. So, so <laughs> you know, I yeah. can't... Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I it's just like it's just like people like people that go to a prison for a long time. Like I remember, I was still living in North Carolina at the time, and I think it was actually national news. There was this guy who got convicted of rape and murder, and it was like thirty years later they find out via DNA testing that he never did it, never did it. I mean, can you imagine how? Step away from this, like, how awful that must be to go to prison for thirty freaking years and you never did anything wrong. 30 years of your life that you'll never get back and you only live once like that's i just can't imagine what that feeling is like that's just absolutely awful like you're taking someone's life away and it's like i don't care how much money you give them you just cannot ever get those 30 years of your life back but they i mean he comes back into society and you gotta think about it 30 years like cell phones didn't exist computers weren't really a thing that you could grasp the internet wasn't a thing I mean, you just, you go from being behind bars and you know, solitary confinement for what he was charged with, and you might hear little whispers of this or that, but you literally go outside free for your first time, and you see people using these small things, calling people. Everyone's got computers. Like, you seriously Everyone go out there. Everyone is not listening to music on a speaker. They have these things in their ears now. Yeah, like, and it's like we all, we, we all like, look like pod people to that man. Yeah, point. like seriously, at that point, like you, you're starting your entire life from complete scratch because society changed so much, and you've been away from it. And I mean, it just sucked. Like hearing that story just made me feel so bad for the guy because it's like you'll never get those years back, and it's like, and he's probably gonna spend at least five years just getting back on his feet. Like, it's it's extremely, extremely sad. Like, thank God for DNA testing now. Um, I mean, yes, we have people that commit these crimes and they get away with it, and that sucks. But at least we're kind of able to move away from people being wrongly convicted. Like, yes, it still happens. But on a much, I mean, you hear about it all the time, like these people that were convicted of murder. And now because of DNA testing, they can prove that they were never involved and stuff like that. So, I mean, the advancement of technology, I mean, definitely in the world of crime, it's become so advanced. I mean, it's great. I mean, yes, we've had some people slip, like Casey Anthony, how she got away with that absolutely makes me sick to my stomach. And then for her to come out and say stuff like, oh, I want to adopt a kid. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, you were seriously fucking insane. Um but we'll, we'll stay away from that. But yeah, I mean, it just goes from like to technology. It's the same thing. Like technology is going to move so fast and then there's going to be little trends. Like I see it now, like my little brother, like some of these like words they're using now and like some of these things, like these dances that are becoming a thing. Uh, no, what the no. hell? I, so, you know, I have a couple of friends who are like around age 19. And they introduced us to, like, a friend of theirs that's 17. And just talking to that person for, like, an hour, I was just like, dear lord. I'm well, yeah, and, yeah, and 17. So you're talking about less than a, 10 years. You're talking about yeah, less than 10 year, year difference. difference. Yeah. So now talk about when you're having kids. Like, it's going to be much, much worse. And that's why everyone's, like, your grandparents told your parents were like, oh, these kids are crazy. Your parents are like, oh, these kids are crazy. We're going to be saying the exact same shit. I'm saying this shit now. And I'm yeah, not. Yeah, Russ and I, we sitting here, we're listening to shit now, just like six year olds with cell phones. What? You don't need, you know, a six year old doesn't need a cell well, phone. I, I, so I want some perspective. When did everyone here get their first cell phone? I didn't get a cell phone until freaking eighth grade. I didn't I got, get a cell phone until I was 18 and started college. I got mine in sixth. And the only reason I got one was because it was. It was cheaper to add me to my parents' cell phone plan than it was for me to use pay phones. That's the only Yeah, reason. I didn't use a cell phone until I was 18 because everyone had a cell phone and the only person I would ever call is home. The only, sorry, the only place I would ever call is home. So all I do is just borrow another person's cell phone because everyone had one in high school and just said, yeah, I need to, I need someone to pick me up or something like that. Yeah. Easy, props off. I, and then in college, because, you know, I'm obviously like out of the house more often, then I finally got my first cell phone and it wasn't even a smartphone. 
even though smartphones were around, they just were really expensive. Yeah, my, so. my, fir- my first phone was the Motorola Razor. I had the product red Motorola Razor, and I thought it was the greatest thing that, on earth. That was that was like my third phone. Um, you know, I like I, that was my third phone, and I. Like, was I remember so... when the Razor was a freaking the it was the freaking phone for years. Like that was the phone to have. People were obsessed it was so slim. with it. That was the thing. Like, I, remember so my, I remember my phone history. It went from the Motorola Razor, then I went to the Samsung Instinct, which was deemed the iPhone killer, and it was the biggest piece of shit ever. Then I went to the Palm, <laughs> then I went to the Palm Pre. Was the Palm Pre was a great phone. It was just WebOS didn't get the support it needed. I mean, it was a great phone. And then I went from that to the HTC Evo, and then I went to the Evo 3D, and then I got the first iPhone, which was the 4S, and I've had every you, iPhone since. So I had the 4S, gone, the 5, the 5S, and now the 6. You have gone through so many nicer cell phones than I have. Like, I oh remember- yeah, ever since I got the, ever since the, I got the Palm Pre, I got a new phone every single year. So I went from Palm Pre to Evo, Evo to 3D, 3D to 4S to 5 to 5S, and now I have the 6. I see. Like, I just can't justify buying a new phone every year. Like, just there's not enough significant upgrades. There's upgrades, but like, but I remember that. Um, God, I, I went from like two bricks to a razor to this like little piece of garbage. Then I didn't have a cell phone for a full year and a half, and then there. Then I went from three GS to four S to five S, and I guarantee you that when I'm finally able to upgrade again, it'll probably be. The 6S. Uh, I always get the you know second run the second rendition of whatever number they're on. So anyway, continuing forward. Uh, cell phones. Uh, um. Cell phones. Cell phones. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, uh, Mass Effect is apparently rumored we are getting a fourth one of those. Uh, oh, I big surprise what, there. Yeah, it's like, oh man, it makes money. It makes EA lots of money. Mmm. There won't be. Guess what? Thing. We're also going to see a Grand Theft Auto 6. Ha ha. Breaking news here. We're going to see a Grand Theft Auto 6. I heard rumors call- there's, there's going to be a new Call of Duty in twenty coming out in 2016. Yeah. So. All right. Well, the reports Forza are. Horizon 3 will be coming out next year, too. Um, and then followed by Forza Motorsport 7. So. Well, well, the ru- I, 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 I'm, I'm a freaking. I can predict the future. Well, the rumor is uh, it'll take place in the Helios Cluster, a cluster of hundreds of solar systems in the galaxy. You play as a Pathfinder in an adventure far removed by time and space from Commander Shepard's axe in the Mass Effect trilogy. Uh, as a combat trained but untested explorer, your goal is to lead an expedition into the cluster to establish a new home for humanity. Uh, let's see, you're going to be going through multiple solar systems, uh, you'll fight cutthroat outlaws, uh, there's alien technology, holds the key to gaining pow- uh, power in this region of the galaxy, uh, you'll build colonies and spend resources to recruit, recruit mercenaries and develop an AI-controlled strike team that you deploy on missions, uh, there will also be a multiplayer-style horde mode, like in Mass Effect 3, and that's pretty much the brief little bit of info they have found. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to call it right now. This shit's going to be freaking announced during Microsoft's press conference this year. Watch. I mean, Microsoft's always been close with Mass Effect. Mass Effect used to be exclusive. And EA. And EA. Like yeah. EA. Yeah, so, well, it depends. I mean, Madden's always been more on the PlayStation side. Yeah, but where, uh, where Battlefield's they all- always been on PlayStation. Well, they've always been on it, but like... Well, no, I mean, they they get the better versions. They get the better version. Oh, they get the better versions, but where do they get demoed during E3? All at Microsoft. Every single one of them. Battlefield, Battlefield, uh, what was it? No, but yeah, Battlefield 4 was demoed at Microsoft. I remember that, because they did not have Call of Duty that one year. They showed Battlefield 4, that's right. Yeah, they didn't show Call of Duty, and also the fucking demo crashed on stage. That was hilarious. Yeah. This is the time, this is the great time of year, and we talked about this on Unscripted yesterday too, where this is the time where, I mean, it's a little bit too early, but in a couple weeks is when we're going to start seeing leaks and rumors about what's going to happen at E3, and then all we're going to be left to do is speculate until that day happens. I'm very much, yeah. It's going to be very, very great. 
Oh man, I I love E three and I love everything around E three and like this is ooh, this, because this is a- also the other thing is this is the time where company is like okay we need to figure out what we can show during the press conference and what we can't and if we can't show it let's announce it before E three. So there's always a lot of announcements before E three too. Yeah, or at well, least well, like or at least something like oh we're going to show this game at E three like um we talked about this on unscripted uh. Crytek came out and said that they're going to be showing something new at uh, E3. Probably a new crisis, but who knows? And we're going to see more of little things like that. Um, Do you so, want yeah. to, like, I know this isn't PC related, but, like, Sony had, like, 12 studios working on games. None of them announced. What the yeah, fuck is Sony, Sony, going Sony, on with Sony? Sony has the opportunity to freaking blow E3. Because here's the thing. At this current point... Microsoft has Sony freaking massacred this holiday season. Halo, Tomb Raider, like a Forza. Complete, yeah, like complete like massacre because Uncharted was supposed to be the big title, and now that's been delayed. Sony has nothing that we know of for this holiday but, season. But like I, I talked about this on the GameCast with Aaron. Like Microsoft at this current time is set up to just have this amazing holiday season, and then Sony, if we are lucky, we're getting The Last Guardian. Yeah, and right. the, last, the Last Guardian will probably be an amazing game, especially considering how long it's been taken to, taking to make. But it's still just, like, one game, and it's, like, it's going to be great for the gamers, like, people like us, but for, like, the average consumer, they're not going to know what the fuck it is. Yeah, uh, like, I mean, that'll be a game that gets around by word of mouth, but... Yeah, like, I mean, here's the thing. Like, I just hope so. Because like, here's the thing. Sony's, like, doubling the sales of the Xbox One. Like, month to month, they're doubling the sales. The only month yet that the Xbox One has outsold the PlayStation 4 was last December. And that was because Microsoft was giving Xbox Ones away pretty much. Oh, well, yeah. They couldn't lose that holiday yeah. season. They yeah. couldn't. So, I mean, and like, that the, means I just hope that Sony isn't getting cocky and they're like, ah, oh, whatever, we'll still sell just... Like, no, you guys need to have a strong-ass lineup I mean, going they, into this holiday they, season. They've, they had Bloodborne this year, which that's huge. Bloodborne was great. They Bloodborne do have, they is, have Street Fighter. Let's not forget about that. Street Fighter is going to be exclusive. That's on PC, too, though. Like, that's the... Yeah, that's, but here's the thing, like... Con- yeah. Like, fighting games, people typically play on consoles. Like, well, I, yeah, I could that, get... too, and you gotta keep in mind that the amount of people that don't game on PC, so... Yeah, technically, it's gonna be on PC, but it's just, like, Titanfall, like... It, you can't call it an Xbox One exclusive, but you're talking about competing against Microsoft's Xbox One. It's not gonna be on the Xbox One, so... I, that's I, a I, game that, unless you're a PC gamer... You, if you want to play Street Fighter, you have to play it on the PlayStation Four. So but that's, that's gonna not be coming he- out till next year. They said spring of twenty sixteen. Oh, that's next year. Yeah, like that's oh, another wow. one that got. Yeah, Sony's really got to fucking because of course they're gonna get the multi plats, but they've really got to figure out what they're doing. Like I said, they have the they have all these fucking studios. They have so much more studios than Microsoft. I mean, there's Santa Monica. I mean, what the, are we gonna, are we gonna see a new God of War announced and? Are we going to see, like, Killzone's been working, like, Killzone has well, two different well, teams. Well, well, yeah, but Gorilla Games well, is Gorilla, working on sorry. something completely different, Yeah, they're though. supposedly working on an RPG. It's been two years since Killzone, like... Yeah, you know? so I think that we'll probably definitely see that during E3. We have to see it at this point. Like, uh, uh, yeah, I, Sony, I, I mean, we haven't seen anything from Santa Monica in forever. Like, we haven't seen anything from Media Molecule since Tearaway. We haven't seen well, they, anything they, Well, from... they, they gave us Little Big Plant 3. No, that wasn't them. That wasn't Media Molecule. Wait, was it wasn't? Studio. No, that was not them. Who uh, was it? So, I, th- are you sh- no. I thought for sure that was... I will pull it up. Give me a sec. Uh, yeah, I'm pulling it up, too. I thought for sure that was Media Molecule. Wasn't it Media Molecule that was on the stage they, and they, announced it? They made the fierce first two, but it was developed by... Uh, give me a second. Developers. Sumo Digital. Yep, it was oh. developed by Sumo Digital, who their most recent other game was Sega Sonic All Stars Racing Transformed, Forza Horizon Two, uh, Big Planet Three, Xbox Weird. Fitness, 
Yeah, they worked on a lot of weird games. Bro, right, so but... this isn't so this is probably what happened last year. I guarantee this is what happened. Sony's like, oh shit, we're not gonna have anything this holiday season. So we need to get something out. And Media Molecule's busy, so Sumo Digital, we're hiring you to come out with a little big plant three, and that's why the game wasn't that good. That's probably what happened. Um, yeah, but I, yeah, I'm Sony actually... has Sony has to have some good freaking stuff. They have that one game, what is it, Until Dawn that yeah. they that game, we haven't really seen much from it, though, so we'll probably see more Until Dawn. Sony's saying, like I said, Gorilla Games, they have to announce their game at this point. They have Supposedly, to. Supposedly, there's going to be an exclusive Ratchet & Clank for PS4. Oh, yeah, Insomniac's confirmed they're working on that. That, I can guarantee you, is coming out this holiday season. Which, new- like, the last one that was great was A Crack in Time. So they need to get back to that level of quality, because A Crack in Time was one of the best games of the last generation, in my opinion. Like, I don't get a platinum trophy for a game unless it's an amazing game. And that was an so, amazing I mean, game. Yeah, I mean, at this current point, we don't know of anything. But Sony, I mean, after the press conference, it's either going to be, we're going to be either super excited or super bummed out. It's There's no in-between. There, we're either going to be freaking hyped and freaking ready for the holiday season, or we're going to be like, okay, PlayStation 4 is going to be collecting dust. You know, they, oh yeah, it's also kind of important to note that if we get hyped, we kind of have to calm down and make sure that it's exclusive. Like, yeah, because yeah. that's what happened at Microsoft. They're like ninety minutes of games, and I'm like, man, I want to buy an Xbox One. And then Bronson pointed out that most of the games were actually uh, multi plats, and I'm like, oh, and that deflated the balloon a little bit. Yeah, like. Yeah, I, it's like when you're caught up in the celebration, the loud music, and the announcements it, of awesome shit like Halo Two Remaster. You Ted, you you get a little oh, you, you get sure. to, you get a little carried like, away by the excitement, and you like, don't really. I came think, out of that. I came out of Sony's press conference last year, going fucking Batman. Yeah, and Nick and I were just kind of sitting there, just like powers. <sighs> yeah, that was that was bad. That, that was, was a, they spent fifteen fucking minutes of that damn press conference on powers. They they closed strong though. They they rebounded from that, but man, it killed all momentum. Like if, if they had not put powers in that presentation, that would have been a way better show. Yeah, uh, that was or, awful. Like I'm really curious what they're gonna do with the Vita at this point because like dude, at this point the Vita's done. It's so done, dude. There's no. Sony would have to read. Sony rumors. would have. Sony would have to reinvest so oh, much I, I, money I, I, I to know, make that but... come back to life, and they're just oh. not going to do that because they can either invest three hundred million to bring the Vita back to life, or three hundred million to make the PlayStation Four and come even I better, am, and they I will am... triple their profits by doing How it on about the PlayStation Four and the Vita million to come up with something to fight against DirectX Twelve. Something I, like that. I, I'm I'm well aware <laughs> of this. I am just saying that like they have to say something about it, like they did last year. Yeah, it's uh, they'll, they'll probably do a price cut. Thing. They have to do a price cut. Here's the thing about thing. E3 is that it's not just like watched by gaming enthusiasts, but f- investors. Like if this is like a big deal for your business because it is so oh, publicized, yeah. and it's like well because PlayStation is a huge part of Sony, and so is you know the Xbox division at Microsoft. You bet that some financial investors are going to watch the thing i mean like I, I can't think of any other way why they would think that you know they would keep talking about sales charts like why would nintendo keep talking about sales charts clearly you can't convince a gamer to buy a system just solely because well, everyone if, else bought it if you look at the stock market on that day there's a lot of fluctuations in the gaming industry e3 is a big change on the stock market for those companies it makes a big difference i will say the coolest way i've ever seen those numbers was sony that year they did it with little big planet that was super freaking cool that was awesome that was absolutely fucking that was awesome. actually i was like oh this is actually freaking really cool Cool. Um, yeah. yeah i you know i think that for like you look at the libraries for those systems right now and i'll i'm gonna go back to the vita for a second sorry for turning this into unscripted everyone but we there that was all the pc news for the week sorry um <laughs> we're off the rails now uh we're off the rails fucking let's do this um like you look at the the libraries for the xbox one and the ps4 neither of them blow me away um, and it really comes down to this. Do you want big AAA experiences that are exclusive, or do you want indie exclusives with a couple of AAAs? And that's pretty much, like, that's what it comes down to, because, I mean, Sony has a bunch of great indie exclusives. Transistor, Octodad, Apotheon, Rezogun, 
and then like a couple of bigger budget ones like Infamous and Bloodborne, or do you want a bunch of big blockbuster ones, Sunset Overdrive, Halo, Project Spark, Forza, Dead Rising, and then like one or two indies like D4. So, and right now the the libraries are just so similar, right? Like, you know, Destiny, both. Dragon Age, both. Call of Duty, both. Grand Theft Auto, both. Uh, you know, just so many games are on both that people care about that exclusives now matter more than ever. And quite honestly, if you want a gaming PC right now, unless there is something you just have to play on one of those systems, I would say go get a Wii U. Because, like, you know, like, gaming PC, it plays Destiny, well, will be playing Destiny soon. Assassin's Creed, Dragon Age, Grand Theft Auto. Destiny's but, coming to PC? Yeah, eventually. I think it's coming out relatively soon, but they said it's coming to PC. At least uh, that's what... Um, yeah. Uh, but they said it's still in development as of last month. Um, so, anyway, like, you look at those two libraries, and it's like, well, you know, like, what, what are you going to do here? And, like... People, you know, I've been asked, like, I'm not sure about you guys, but amongst your, like, friends who are more casual gamers or just, like, play video games every now and then, do they typically go to you for advice on them or thoughts on them? Oh, yeah. Like, I get that all the time, and they ask me, which one should I buy? And I'm just like, well, if you want this, this. Like, like they're basically the same. Like, where do your friends play? How much do you value an interface? And do these very few exclusive titles on each appeal to you? Um, but yeah, so uh, as for the Vita, like, they still have to support it because people bought it and you don't want people getting mad at you for not supporting your handheld. Uh, especially if they paid large sums of money for it. They, they still do support the Vita. A bunch of Vita games came out this week. It's just a matter of how are they going to phrase this at E3? Like, at E3, they're, we're guaranteed to get a price cut. And, like, are they going to continue to put indie games on it? Are they going to finally bring a bunch of really good Japanese games to the States? You know, yeah, like... what, I, what I honestly predict they'll do is they'll probably announce a price cut for the Vita. They'll probably cut the price of those damn memory cards. And then they'll announce some of the Japanese games coming to America. And they might announce a couple indie titles. That's really all they need to do to... I mean, that's the best they can really do at this point. They're not going to pour a lot of money into that platform Cause... anymore. Because my Vita, like, we get... There are a bunch of great indie games that come out that are cross-buy. I never play them on the PS3 or PS4. I play them all on Vita. Rogue Legacy, I play on Vita. Shovel Knight, I'm going to play on Vita. Because these, you know, these games just... They just, I guess, feel better on that platform most of the time. Um, and then, like, there are a lot of Japanese games that haven't come to... What the hell? Who is cracking a whip? Hello? Yeah, I hear you. Okay, whatever. Uh, but there's a bunch of, like, Japanese games that are really popular that just haven't come to the States yet. Like, Fantasy Star Online 2. Like, I know people who have, like, downloaded fan localizations and imported the game and hacked their Vita to play that game. So, I mean, there like, there's demand, and it is it doesn't cost somebody that much money to localize them. And it could be a boost for that system, even if it is small. Um, they just you know. literally just need to go out there and say just enough to say, hey, we're not letting it necessarily die, but we just don't really care anymore. Like, that's what yep. they need to do. They're not going to do what they did with the PSP in, like, in, in like 2009. They came out and said, oh, here's all this new shit for the PSP. You yeah, know? not happening. Yeah, like, that's not happening. Uh, but... Like, but you look at the second half of this year, and like you look at the Vita games, and it's like Lost Dimensions looks kind of cool. They got that uh, fighting climax game that I'm really hyped for, even though I'm probably gonna be playing it more on PS3 because, well, it's a fighting game. Uh, and then they got Operation Abyss, and then Danganronpa did amazing for a Vita last year. It sold really well, sold the system. And then they got a spinoff for that coming out, but I, you know, Anthony and I got to play that at the press event we went to, and it doesn't look super great. The story looks cool, but the actual gameplay looks very stiff. 
I mean, so, like, I don't know. And then you look at the library that's out right now for it. Like, the most popular Vita games on Gamefly are, like, Child of Light, all a bunch of Japanese games that, like, you know, only the most hardcore gamers will know about, and then ports of PS2 games. You know, and Telltale. So, I don't know. Anthony. Yes. I am giving you the task of re- reviving the Vita. What do you do? Uh, you need, well, for me at least, you need some big pop culture seller. Which no one's going to do unless Sony. Because here's funds the thing I've always kind of felt about. Yeah, this is the it's thing just I'm ridiculous. Always... I mean, you're, no one's going to. To build a game that's going to be big and AAA like that's going to cost you a lot of money. Okay, and you're well, not going to make your AAA, money back. I mean, like, pop culture. Like, you know, like, if Microsoft made a handheld, all they have to do is just say Halo for handheld. And it would, at least for a little bit, sell like crazy. Nintendo, all they have to do is just put a Pokemon game out. That's all they really need to do. And it sells like crazy every time. Sony, I always had a, I always felt they always had a bit of a struggle coming with a big pop culture. Yeah, they got Uncharted. Uncharted's on its way up there. Yeah, they have. They God definitely of got War. Gran Turismo. Now, God of War is eh, no. God of War is not a Pokemon or Halo. Gran Turismo, yeah, I could see that. But at this point, they would rather spend ten years on Gran Turismo Seven than on a Vita. So, um, I always kind of felt like Sony I, had a I'm bit of a struggle with so- pop- like, I'm not saying your solution needs to be totally realistic. I know. I'm saying but, like am I like, but yeah, like triple at this point, yeah, no one's gonna make it, but I'm just like if you're gonna sell me on a Vita, you kinda have to give me the one huge game that what that, you know, I wanna play and also every single everybody else wants to play, like Pokemon, that will sell the Nintendo system portable. Easy. In fact, I would even dare say that Wii U, if they had a fully fledged Pokemon game, I wouldn't be surprised if that actually got Wii U sales up for a little bit. Same with the right. Vita. Like, so, j- just to like, you know, just for a thought experiment, I pulled up like what are the best selling PSP games, and this is, uh, I'm not sure of as when this was written, but it seems relatively recent because they have a lot of the bigger titles on here, and. The, out of the top five selling Vita games, two are Grand Theft Auto, two are Monster Hunter. One is Daxter. That is the game that would Grand make Theft a huge Auto difference. Would huge. be a would be yeah. a, a Monster Hunter that would be big, but that's a Nintendo 3DS thing now. Monster Hunter yeah. 4 Ultimate is on 3DS. Yeah, and like I said, they're not gonna put the money in it to make a good Monster Hunter when there's. I mean, they oh. might make their money back. Like I said, I'm not I'm not aiming for realism here. I'm aiming for oh like, yeah, I mean like yeah, I said, if, if like, you just like want to be ridiculous, pop, then cool, like yeah, a, like I said, a, a pop new, culture thing. Monster Hunter yeah, I mean, is huge wanna, in Japan you, at least. If you don't want to be ridiculous, and that oh yeah, Kojima's working on a new Metal Gear, and Grand Theft Auto V's yeah. coming to the Vita, and oh uh, god, Batman's well, I don't awesome. mean like I don't <laughs> like mean a new like Batman that point, built from the ground up for the Vita. Like I mean, I mean like within reason, but still extremely unlikely. The, um, yeah, triple A title like Gran Turismo and Vita. I mean, Gran Turismo existed on PSP. It took a while, but eventually got there. Took them fucking forever. It was actually a really good game too. I really liked the Vita. Yeah, but it's Gran Turismo on PSP. on PSP. It came out on the PSP, and Gran Turismo is huge. Like freaking like Gran Turismo doesn't really pop up on anybody's radar, honestly. But you know what? It makes a huge amount of money, and that's what that's what matters. So, yeah, yeah, I. Like, if I, you know, let's say I, there's one of two things I would do. I, I would go to Square and be like, Final Fantasy VII, how much money to remake this for Vita? We'll make this happen. They mm, would rather get the sales from a PS4 version. Oh, I'm sure they would. But, like, if Sony's bankrolling the project, because, like, that would instantly set, like... I, I remember. So did we? Did I mean, we a lot of fans the... would be angry if I'm honest. But they'd buy it though. Like they'd buy, I, they, they would begrudgingly buy it. But they'd buy it. Like at the end of the day, you know that's what they want. And then they would start to explore other games on that system, which they're all games like that. Yeah, they Ever. need as far as price goes for the Vita. They need that thing to be out for. They, literally, if they want any hope for this thing, and I'm sure they've got the cost down. That shit needs to be like 150 bucks. You need to be able to get a Vita for 150 bucks, and it come with like an eight gigabyte card. Uh, like that's I think what... more than eight gigabytes because you're gonna download games digitally. 
You got to be a lot more. Yeah, I mean, depend. I mean, obviously, they can't lose. They can't lose. They're not going to lose money on the platform now. So, I mean, depending on what those cards cost them, maybe, maybe sixteen gigabytes. But they need to get out at that one forty nine price. That's what they need to do. I mean, they come out at one forty nine, then people that have always been on the fence may be like, oh, okay, for one hundred fifty bucks now, I'll get it. it. Also has remote play, so yeah, I'll do it for one fifty. Um, they they can't they have to have a Vita at one fifty if they want any type of hope because then they can push that okay for one hundred fifty bucks you get a good full gaming handheld platform. There's a lot of indie titles. There's already a somewhat decent library, and you can remote play for one hundred fifty bucks. Yeah, that actually becomes somewhat enticing. I mean, so, like I you know I I look at the Vita's library, and while there are no like cultural milestone games. You know, there there are some like really amazing titles for that system. Uh, you know, like like uh, I I'm looking at its top ten most highest rated games. It's like Persona Four Golden is amazing. Velocity Two X was a lot of fun. The Rayman games were great. Great Final Fantasy Ten was great. And to this day, the best little big planet's on Vita. The best little big planet is on Vita. Oh, so that game did work very well with the touchscreen and yeah, you could like yeah. make shit with the touchscreen and it controlled really well. The levels were really fun, you know. Like, um, the the funny thing is, while well, the Vita, the Vita might have actually ended up making Persona Five even bigger, like end up being huge because I looked at Persona Four Golden sales uh, while we're doing this, and it's over a million, which for that game and that platform is huge. That means one tenth of people who own Vitas own that game, and that doesn't include digital sales. Um, which makes me think that. Wait, what game is that? Persona Four Golden. Oh yeah, one every ten. Yeah, I mean it's not Halo type of adoption rate, but it's <laughs> on the original I mean, Xbox. Halo, I mean, you have an original Xbox. Did you have Halo? Well, Xbox most certainly is, yes. Xbox is different though because people, everyone bought. I mean, even, but let's look, like let's some more reasonable. Let's look at like the Xbox 360. Even then, I mean, the adoption rate, I think it's like one every three or something ridiculous like that. Like that's freaking insane. Like one every three machines sold have a copy of Halo attached to it. I mean, that's unbelievable. And well, then with the bundle on, now, I wouldn't like, be surprised if that keeps going. And then like on the original Xbox, Halo Two, like. It had like a one. I think it was half of all systems had a copy of Halo Two. That's nuts. Um. Anyway. Um. But yeah, I think because of that, everyone who played that game on the Vita will be buying, f- or almost everyone will be buying five on PS4. I think that is going to help five be even bigger than it already was. I think five is. I think five is kind of where mon- the next Monster Hunter is going to be. Like the Monster Hunter keeps getting bigger and bigger, and this new 3DS one did exceptionally well. I think whatever the next Monster Hunter is going to be is just going to explode and be one of the next big games. And, it's, and I feel like this is the Monster Hunter four for the Persona series. Um. Anyway, I'm going to pull up our questions and comments, and then we are going to probably call it an evening. Cool. Um, unless you guys have any PC stories. Oh, Shadowplay is working for me again. Yeah, that's randomly. good. The broken just data ran- is now less broken. Randomly just started working again. I was just like, what the hell? Um, <laughs> oh, the joys. Uh, don't, you, don't you love that with fucking PC stuff sometimes? It's just like, it just fixes why itself. doesn't... Why doesn't this work? Two weeks later, it works again. The fuck. Um. So no new, no new comments on the raid. Please, people, come comment, listen, watch. Uh, you know, we Nick's been streaming PC games. We've been talking PC games, and uh, we do have a PC gaming line. Uh, sadly, the full line is it. I just sent our builds over to them to get wholesale prices, and we're gonna get that all hammered out. So we, you know. Have the set builds and the prices for you, but right now, just you can call this number seven seven five three three two six 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 six, and get a tell them uh, that the gamer access you know, from the gamer access, or just ask for me, and give them the price, and they'll give you a build and how much it'll cost, and you'll be able to set up with a badass gaming PC. 
Curtis, you know, so, yeah. Um, anyway, guys, you got anything else? I think that does it. All right. Bye. Peace. Bye.